walking away from God because of human suffering and evil. The overall arching message is life will be peaches, everything will be good, yeah. everything will go your way, there'll be no trouble, there'll be no struggle, there'll be no suffering. It doesn't give people the proper view of Christ and, and the true amazing gospel message that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Bruce Lawn. And so it talks about her being freed from her conservatorship, but then it says in the recording in which Spears claimed that if God really existed, she wouldn't have suffered or lost the autonomy to make her decisions for 13 years. God would not have allowed that to happen to me if God existed. I don't believe in God anymore because of the way my children and my family have treated me. Okay, so her reason for no longer believing in God is because she believes that because of what happened to her in this conservatorship from her dad taking over all of her affairs because she had some sort of mental health crisis, that therefore God can't exist. What did you think about the Britney Spears video? Um, walking away from God because of human suffering and evil. Man, it's kind of sad, bro. I feel like that's a lot of people's story, though. Hmm. It, uh, but it's 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 very it's shallow, though. It's very it's a shallow reason to me hmm. personally. If God is real, why would He allow evil? If God is real, why would He allow suffering? And I think this is a position that, though I am empathetic towards, is actually void of the basic understanding of what the scripture narrative actually is that you have a story where there's a lot of evil happening, there's a lot of bad things happening, there's a lot of bad people doing bad things, there's a lot of people that aren't able to live righteously, and God decides to send his own son to earth and does miracles and heals people and raises the dead and teaches and all these amazing things, develops a following that he then becomes persecuted and crucified. That that right there, that suffering right there, a perfect man living a perfect life with no sin being crucified is the greatest injustice ever told. You seen Christ and people who really don't follow Christ. Yeah. The people that showed you God didn't really follow God, so you already had a skewed view of God. Mm. And now that you're an adult, you're like, oh, this is BS. Like, I don't even, I don't believe this because it's like, oh, well, maybe the people that showed it to you didn't really do a good job of presenting it and yeah. showing it in the proper way. What does it mean for someone to claim being a Christian? Does it just mean you were kind of were raised down south and this is culturally who you were? Does it mean that your art has to reflect it in some way? Because if we're honest, the whole oops, I did it again, the fetishizing of young girls in costumes and that music video and, and, and just a whole Catholic school girl vibe, that stuff didn't really seem very congruent with someone that is professing to be a Christian. I think this is more of a cultural Christian type of moment that she had kind of growing up, going to Southern Baptist Church, even though she would always claim that she was a uh, Southern Baptist, a Christian. I think there's a bit of incongruence there. And what does that actually mean to the nuts and bolts of someone's daily walk with Jesus? I think this is why the prosperity gospel and the new age gospel is so problematic. Yeah. Because if, it, if, 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 if the overall arching message is life will be peaches, everything will be good, yeah. everything will go your way there'll be no trouble there'll be no struggle there'll be no suffering instead of equipping people for how to be prepared through to go through suffering yeah right i i, I think a lot of folks get into following jesus and think that like everything is going to be peaches i i hate the prosperity gospel bro i'm not even gonna lie hot take i don't like it at all why don't you like the prosperity gospel because it's a, it's a false gospel it's it just doesn't it doesn't give people the proper view of christ and and the true amazing gospel message that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm. I don't, it, it's, it, 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 like, I feel like there's some people that feel like the gospel needs to be spiced up to be interesting. Mm -hmm. And that's just not true. If you read the Bible in context with historical context in, in, um, and read it chronologically and mm -hmm. read it at, in a, in a full story, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful story of Come redemption on. and so much more. And I think yeah. people just want to add to it. And think, oh well, uh, maybe if I, maybe if I don't highlight this, and I just highlight this. Maybe people will love God more. Yeah. Just and just some like, of the good parts. Yeah, it's like that just doesn't work, bro. Yeah. Come on, like that yeah. that doesn't work, like longevity wise for mm. people's faith it doesn't work. That's good. That's good. Have you had any experiences with the prosperity gospel, or maybe believing in a incomplete gospel that's caused spiritual harm, or or kind of let you down at times, or, or a crisis of faith? Man, I grew up Pentecostal, so I had a really like I don't want to say toxic, but I had a I, I had a toxic uh, Pentecostal Baptist, and mm -hmm. I grew up like man, like every everything was 
like demonized and I, and and my view of Christ was really weird. Mm. Like and by weird I mean like um as I as I became an adult and started reading the Bible like Bible by myself and um like going through with mentors yeah. and listening to people like uh Francis Chan and um Matt Chandler and John Piper and mm-hmm. uh Tim Keller. Tim, Tim Keller. Keller's the goat, bro. Yeah. But like so I I just had like a weird view of God like it's like it was like it, it wasn't let God change your heart. It was like let God change your behavior. Mm. And I, as I grew up, I, I knew that's just not the truth. Come on. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Bad things happening to good people or a good person, only true good person that walked to earth is literally the crux of the foundation of the gospel message. You have Jesus who lived the life we could never live, died the death that we should have died on the cross. While on the cross, he is literally praying for the people who are uh, persecuting him, praying for the people that are mocking him, praying for the people that are hurling insults, praying for the people who are crucifying him, and he's there praying for them. It's the only story where the hero of the story dies for the villains. Injustice happens, suffering happens, something completely foul and evil happens to a good person, yet the story doesn't end there, that the very thing that was meant for evil was then turned around and used for good when Jesus rises from the dead, when Jesus conquers death, demons, destruction, and creates a new pathway for us, sprouting this movement called the way that we then see reach the the, the known world all throughout the book of Acts and completely revolutionizes the whole world. And it said that Simeon blessed God.